In this video, I'm going to very briefly describe the economic order quantity model. The EOQ model is a model from inventory theory. And um, there are various assumptions. Firstly, we assume that demand is constant um, at a rate D. We assume there's an ordering cost. So for every single order, there's a, a bulk cost of K. So there's no lead time. So as soon as we order our stock, it, it, it's there. We also assume there's a unit purchasing cost of P, so P for every single unit of, of stock we have. And then we assume we have a holding cost, so the fact of, of sitting on a lot of stock costs us. And we don't allow shortage of demand. So the idea is, what is the quantity um, that we need to order um, at every order so as to minimize overall cost? The, uh, the general picture looks like this. Um, this, you see, is the constant demand rate that just make, goes down at a rate D and every order um, um, our, our stock just jumps straight back up to a value of Q. So a little bit of algebra will tell us that this point is Q over D since we've got a, a straight line going down at a rate minus DX plus Q that point there is Q over um, D. So then we want to say, all right, what is the, co the cost as a function of that quantity? Well, it can be written as the sum of three costs, the cost associated with ordering, the cost associated with purchasing, and the cost um, associated with holding. Now, we assume that the, the cost we're looking at is uh, the cost per time period. All right. Now, if I just skip back to, to the previous slide, we know that a cycle is going to be of length Q over D. So we have to keep that in mind when we're going to be looking at the time uh, period, the cost per time period. So we know that every um, every d over q. Um, sorry, if we go back here, we know that every q over d time periods we're going to need to order. So every q over d time periods we're going to incur a cost k. So the cost, the, the unit, the cost per time period of um, ordering is k divided by um, q over d. So it's k multiplied by d over q. That's c1. We know that there are going to be d units uh, per time period that are sold. So we can easily say that we have p times d um, as, our, um, as our purchasing cost. And then finally, we have the holding cost. Now, what we do in the holding cost is we integrate over the length of a cycle, so from zero to q over d. Time the the we integrate the total number of um, stock we have at that time period, that time point, multiplied by the holding stock. And we could actually get an expression for IoT very very easily. But if I just go back a few slides, all we're doing is integrating under this curve. And that is basically the area under this curve. Um, and, and we know that the height of this uh, triangle is Q, and the width of the triangle is Q over D. So we got the area of a triangle, Q squared over 2D multiplied by H. But remember, that's the holding cost over the total cycle. We want the holding cost per time period. So we have to uh, divide that by Q over D or multiply it by D over Q. And so then we put those three terms together and we get the cost as a function of Q in the EOQ model. And in general, the curve looks like this. And we want to find the point that minimizes uh, that curve. And that, that point Q star is what we call the EOQ, the economic order quantity. A little, we differentiate C or Q um, with respect to Q. Obtain this expression. We then set that to be zero, and we obtain the value for Q star. Obviously, we'll have um, plus or minus this algebraically, but Q star is a positive quantity, so we're interested in the positive value of that. We can do a very quick test of the, the second derivative to check that that is indeed a, um, a minimum. But that is the economic order quantity. Right now, I'm just going to play with a little bit of sage code um, and take a look at, at, at this graph a little bit closer, at this value a little bit closer. So this is the Sage Interact website. I've literally just uploaded this model. So if I click on it here, 
a little description about what's going on, some very simple code, no need to uh, play with the code at all, we just evaluate that. And there we have all the parameters, and what it's doing is plotting the curve of the cost um, against Q, but also it calculates what the EOQ is equal to, so it's 5 square root of 2, which is just 7.07. .07. So that's actually the cost at um, with Q equals 1, so if I change that to 7.07, .07, it regraphs and puts the point at what looks like the minimum value. So this is just uh, one simple inventory model. There are a, a, a whole bunch of inventory models, um, but that's uh, that's how inventory theory works. Feel free to play around with the Sage code and try different values and see what happens.